South Park is an outrage. We need to cancel South Park. How dare they come after my prime's energy drinks. While I might not be shilling prime energy drink, I will be shilling to you Orc U Energy Boost Orc Juice, baby. Uh, yeah, that's right. I just watched the South Park Not Suitable for Children and uh, have some thoughts. I will say I actually thought it was hilarious. It was, it was pretty damn funny. There's a lot of good stuff to go over here. Not everything hit, but um, we'll we'll take a shot at it. We'll try to break it down. We'll take a look. I'm the man you may know as Z from our reviews. We'll kill you. And we do not have an orc energy drink. I'm sorry to trick you that way. Maybe one day we'll be big enough to have an orc juice. But right now you'll just have to deal with Logan Paul and KSI's prime as South Park takes it to task and shows you what they think of energy drinks, which is not much, especially influencers and OnlyFans, because that's what's going on here. If you crawl, the previous South Park was about Kathleen Kennedy and Disney and the state of Disney, and I thought that episode, while I enjoyed it a lot, didn't go as hard in the paint as it could have against that pretty big mega corporation. But in this sense, they go after OnlyFans and Prime, and what I'll say about South Park is I guess they're, um, look, they've been doing this for a long time, and they deserve whatever they want to do. If they want to make episodes, they keep doing these mega episodes instead of doing, like, their typical 30-minute or 22-minute episodes or do a whole season. They're just like, nah, we have a topic we want to talk about. We want to drop it as an episode. And I think that's actually really smart. Because it gives them more time to think about things and they can have these are a little bit more fleshed out and they have better ideas behind them as opposed to just jamming an episode down. And if you know anything about South Park over the past, I guess, what, 30 years or 23 years? I don't even know how long these mofos have been doing this thing. But they're smart. They know what they're doing. And um, they're not trying to they're trying to push the envelope, but they're not trying to wear themselves out over it. So now they're doing these oversized 46-minute episodes, and I really enjoyed this one. Now, what I will say, though, is besides it's not suitable for children, and I saw way too many inappropriate pictures of minors in this, you are it, it, it's mostly um, dick jokes. The majority of it is dick jokes. I still think it's very funny, but let's talk about the episode. I'm going to break down the plot a little bit, and then I'm going to go into my thoughts as we go through it. Um... <laughs> I mean, it, it made me laugh out loud numerous times, but I like really dumb jokes. So if you've got a good dick joke, I will laugh at you, okay? So don't blame me for that. Um, but I thought I had a really funny intro, especially with like how erotic it was. And I did not expect as much full frontal nudity as I got. Obviously, there were spoilers for this, but it starts off with the kids, and the kids need some cred. They all need their cred. Cred is a energy drink that they're getting from influencers online, and they need it because if you don't have cred in school, you ain't nothing. There's even a little song about it. I got my cred, yeah. So uh, the kids get cred, and then what ha what ends up happening is uh, there is a a teacher who has an OnlyFans account that gets discovered. And there's a big meeting, and Randy finds out that she's supplementing her income because she makes minimum wage with an extra $10,000 a month. And Randy's like, hmm, that sounds like a good idea for me. And then, then the kids just, they don't care about it. They get confronted, they don't care. They care about the cred. All they want is cred. They don't care about what's going on. Double penetrate. Who cares about double penetration? I care about my cred in school because I don't want to get bullied. So Randy goes on, and um, Randy's like, I'm going to start OnlyFans. And he gets no subscribers because he doesn't know what he's doing. And as it goes on, um, there's a whole thing about, there's a whole B, there's an A plot and a B plot. The A plot is, is about cred and the kids trying to build popularity with this stupid energy drink, which is clearly they're lampooning. Logan Paul and KSI and their prime and all, everybody else who has an energy drink. And, you know, maybe they're going to lampoon some orc juice soon. Who knows? 
Um, but they're they're very they understand what they're doing, and then they also the B plot is Randy and the OnlyFans, which don't cross over till towards the end of the episode. So you have these two plots running, and the kids, you know, uh, Cartman's trying to exclude everybody from his club because they have the best cred, and there's this kid that he hates who has no he doesn't want him to have any cred. And eventually, there's a whole side plot with Clyde. And there's clearly a joke that they left on the table that I, I wanted to point out. And again, this is a spoiler for the end. That they're talking about who influences everybody. And Clyde has a stepmom. And there's a joke about OnlyFans and stepmoms that they left on the table. And they just chose not to use... They chose not to do it. They took a lot of the, the low-hanging dick fruits... But they didn't take the low-hanging stepmom fruit from the tree. So just pointing out a little bit of criticism there, Trey. You, you could have taken an easy stepmom pot shot on OnlyFans, but you didn't. It's okay. I'll let you slide this time. I mean, these guys, you know, they can do their thing. So anyway, uh, the plot moves on. And one of the funnier parts is Randy is, besides the fact that he's naked the entire time, exposing himself all the time, his wife, Sharon, decides that she's she's tired of his antics and she's going to start an OnlyFans. And what's really kind of interesting, they deliberately don't show any nudity from Sharon, which I think was very obviously intentional and smart and, and it was good. So she starts an OnlyFans and she's starting to make money. She's buying Chanel. She's buying all these fancy things. And Randy doesn't have a single subscriber until he adds some cred to what he's doing. And eventually, he starts, like, pouring cred on his penis, and he's doing things to bottles. And that's where we get into where the influencers are ultimately bought and sold. And I just, I'm going to play this little click, ugh, this little teaser here. Hold on, I don't need to hear the whole thing. What is this? Let's go. Oh, this is the teaser. Hey guys, we have a big problem. Of course kids are going to see it. We're talking about someone who influences our children. Yeah, so the, none of the parents want to take credibility, but I thought this part, this is the part with the actual influencer who's like, Yeah, bro, I'm totally cool, bro. The important thing is just to be yourself. Be yourself. When I feel like I can't be myself, that's when I need a hydration drink that'll pick me up. That's when I need cred. Ah. It's the coolest sports drink in the world. Cred is 100% sugar free. Well, they keep talking about how like cred is not suitable for children, but they keep marketing it to children. Uh, so Randy is making these videos, and then he realize he he wants to get an advertiser. So what they do is they show you that all the influencers are being auctioned off to the highest bidder, whether it's big pharma or it's the Chinese government <coughs> or it's Voices for Ukraine. Like they killed. That was probably the best part of the whole show is when they they went hard in the paint after all the people trying to influence you and, and trying to uh, create an agenda for the children through an influencer who's not suitable for children. That was the entire point of the entire episode was that there's these people behind the scenes trying to influence your children and you don't realize it because they claim it's not suitable for children, but it clearly it, it's p clearly getting to them. Which clearly includes OnlyFans, I guess. I don't know what kind of agenda is going through OnlyFans, but I guess <laughs> KSI. I don't know what Logan and Paul and KSI. Do they work for the Ukraine? Do they work for Gaza? I don't know who they work for. Like, I never really thought of it that way, but whatever you guys think, Trey Parker. Don't get me wrong. I think social media is probably poisoning everybody's minds. We all have problems with it, but that's not the point they're trying to make. I don't know. Unlike the Kathleen Kennedy one, where they were clearly trying to make a point, this one, there was no real point to be made at the end of it. It kind of just ended with like, because I don't think they even know what the point is. They know social media is bad. They know people are trying to influence people. They don't know exactly who is trying to influence it, because they won't even identify by the end who is trying to influence your kids. That's where that stepmom joke comes back into it, but um, the the there's two the most hilarious part I thought because I didn't know what to expect they they subverted my expectations. They get uh, Randy gets picked up by the FBI 
and Randy, they're like, Randy, your mater- your OnlyFans material is being used. It's being seen by children. It's being seen by minors, and it's being that now the minors are creating pornographic m- material for minors, and they it's just so old timey minors, like cave digging, digging out the coal miners, coal miners with j- giant pieces. Just- a picture after picture of just giant. <laughs> I thought that was the best joke of the night. So kudos to you for, because I didn't know what to expect. They're just like, we're gonna show you all these images of pornographic miners, and <laughs> they, they showed us some miners, all right. So kudos to you, South Park. Again, I thought it was a good episode. I actually thought it was better than the Kathleen Kennedy one because it was less preachy. Because they didn't really have a moral to the story. They didn't really know what they were... Because t- Randy clearly says, like, These influencers are really trying to poison your mind, kids, and you shouldn't do anything. And the very next day, the kids had... Like, they clearly stole the best bottles of cred from him. And we're like, yeah, we don't care. We're going right back to it. And I guess that's the point, is that kids are always going to be influenced. And just try to be careful with what, what they're doing. The- I'm making that message. They didn't say that. So... What do you guys think? Did you enjoy it? Did you think it was good? Did you think it was great? Did you think it was one of the better episodes that we've seen from South Park in a while? Um, They've been pretty much hitting things home. Again, I don't think they go as hard in the paint as they could. They miss a couple jokes, but, you know, it's okay. They're At least they're being relevant, and they're not just beating dead jokes into the ground. Like <clears throat> the old uh, the, the, the joke... The Subway guy, Jared from Subway with AIDS, I feel like was the joke that they, they they killed that joke and they beat that dead horse into the ground. So anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. I would be happy to I respond to all of them. So thank you for that. In the meantime, be sure to check out our podcast. It is on Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, all those great places. And we live stream it here on YouTube and you can catch us all sorts of places. So anyway, uh, from all of us here at Our Reviews Will Kill You to all of y'all at home. Oh, yeah, I got to give it a rating. Uh, oh, my God. Uh, 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10. Maybe 10 out of 10. Your call. Tell me below what's the rating. Anyway, I'm on to the next one.